Oh man. There he is. <clears throat> hey guys, Brady here, and welcome to whatever this thing that I'm starting is. So let me tell you all a tall tale. Way back in the days of yore, I used to work for this channel called He Man 1010. Long story short, I don't work there anymore. I don't work for, I, I don't make videos on that channel anymore. And as I've discussed in the um, update video, um, which I posted, like the whole me talking about the, the YouTubers quitting and all that, I have no intentions of ever telling the real truth behind the story. And by that, I mean, don't ask me about it and don't ask me about all the details because I don't feel like getting nasty. I'm sure you guys don't feel like getting nasty at all. But let's start something new. Since I um, now own the full rights to Brady's Talks, I figured that we um, start a new series. And by that, I mean a old series reborn. Welcome, everybody, to Brady's Talks Rebooted, where I review certain games again, and sometimes new stuff, too. Now, let's talk about this guy. I've discussed in the past... Yeah, I've discussed many a things in the past about this little boy right here. For those of you who don't know, his name is Kirby. Um, um, and allow me to show you what a, a of what a Kirby game is. See this? This is a Kirby game right here. Game Boy Kirby's Dreamland, released in the year 1992, the year that Sonic 2 released, and the year that jump around by house of pain wasn't allowed to go to the number one spot on the charts but that's beside the point and it was also the year that wayne's world was big but again that's beside the point the puffball has been going at it for god knows how long and long story short i've kind of taken a look at too much kirby if i'm being honest tmk you guys remember that kirby superstar commercial <laughs> you know the one where he pops the guy with the needle um Man, that was... Uh, <laughs> God, the 90s were weird. Say hello to Ant Dude for me. Anyways, um... He's made plenty of games over the years, across many different consoles. The Game Boy, the Super Nintendo, the N64, um, even some games coming more later than usual, like Kirby's Dream Land 3 and Kirby 64, rele releasing at the tail end of both the Super Nintendo and N64's lifespans. And, of course, as you all would probably know... Uh, one of my favorite games of all time is this, Kirby's Return of Dreamland, for the Wii. Again, released at the at tail end of the console's lifespan. It even got a remaster. It's not that great, but, you know, that's just my opinion. It's, it's my childhood bias and all that jazz. So, the year was, and the year was 2022. We have not had a Kirby game since 2018, yes. Roughly 2018, Kirby Star Allies was booming up the business. Let me change the uh, lighting very quick. There we go. Um, and it was a great celebration, but he, was, but he was coming up on another anniversary. At least I think he was, or I don't know the full details. So it was time for this guy to get a new game. But people were like, no, we don't want traditional side-scrolling. We want something new. Enter Kirby's... And the forgot Kirby and the Forgotten Land. That was crap segue. Um, but anyways, um, this game was released in 2022, which means it's two years old. I have no idea what a video game's birthday would be like, but that's beside the point. My point is, when I saw the trailer for this game, I was like, mm. and uh, I mean, I was, uh, but I was optimistic. Okay, I was optimistic. I wasn't like, ooh, this is going to ruin the franchise forever. That's not what I thought of at first. The trailers and all the spots looked at, looked advertising. If I'm being honest, people saying that they recommend that you get this game as part of your Switch collection and, want, and recommend this as one of your first Switch games ever, they're lying. But I will wholeheartedly say right now, buy this game. Go ahead. Definitely buy it. So you can enjoy the um, 3D wonder that is Kirby. Yeah, that's right. This game is a 3D platformer. Um, 
which he has never had, surprisingly. Um, I mean, I guess you could count the um, getting off an air ride in city trial, but who doesn't? But, uh, yeah, so... Now, Brady, now you're probably wondering, Brady, what's your opinion on Kirby and the Forgotten Land? I don't like it. Okay, here's, here's the, here's, here's, here's my, here's my full analysis. This is just me, but I'm always going to say that I am a traditionalist. I prefer a series B as it is and have no changes to it whatsoever. And by that, I mean I prefer 2D Kirby. Um, now, sometimes that's probably not the case. Like with the Zelda games, I love the 3D Zelda stuff and um, Fire Emblem. I like Top Down, and of course, I like the 3D stuff, too. Um, and uh, a lot of other RPGs, like Final Fantasy, um, have a, had that sort of thing where it was like Top Down at first, 3D, next, 3D in the next couple years. Um, but... For Kirby, I will always be a traditionalist. I'll be like, give me the platformers, the 2D platformers, please, 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 please. Don't give me anything experimental like this. But that's beside the point. We got this anyways in the year 2022. I played through it, and here's what I experienced. So the story is that Kirby uh, gets sucked into a portal. So most totally familiar for him, I'm presuming. And yes, absolutely. He's very much used to being sucked into things like a sock and Kirby's epic yarn and um, the the space wor paint world, clay world, and uh, rainbow curse, all that jazz. He's pretty much used to being sucked into portals at this point. But the portal takes him to a forgotten land, a very a wide open space where all the wild Ds have been captured for some reason. And Meta Knight or DDD, they're not anywhere to be found. Um... At least not yet. Um, and so it's up to Kirby to save the day, and he meets a new friend. I believe his name is Elphalin. I don't. I don't. Uh, you you forget things. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's his name. Um, and so it's a 3D platforming escapade in order to save the day, beat all the bosses, and presumably stop whatever's going on in the far regions of the Forgotten Lands. And the gameplay is fun. I will say the gameplay is very fun. Even if I said that the game is not good, I still enjoy the gameplay. All the abilities are here and accounted for, at least some of them. And the thing is, when you come to a certain point, you can upgrade those upgrade those abilities and have better, stronger attacks and all that jazz, including some new abilities. Include, uh, yeah, include. Sorry, including new abilities such as the drill power up and gun Kirby, or as I believe the game. Uh, says it is a uh, shooter Kirby. He is dressed as a minder, uh, minder, a miner, and he's um, shooting things. Happy times. Um, you could have called it archaeologist Kirby and gave him a whip, and then you know, I that'll actually get me interested in seeing the fifth Indiana Jones movie. Um, now, how about the boss battles? They are very hard, to be honest. If 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 if. if Listen, if you want this to be your first Kirby game, don't, no, do not do that. Go Get Return of Dream Land Deluxe on the Switch, please do. Or if you can, find the Wii version. Because, ooh, this is like one of the hardest games in the series. And I mean it. Like, all the boss battles are insanely difficult. They're cakewalks when you get around to being um, ex an expert at this game. But believe me... I didn't play this game on hard mode, and I still got my ass kicked. Believe me, just they're just they're just not great bosses, and uh, they're not even great looking either. There's a gorilla, there's a cat, and there's a very ugly um, armadillo creature, and um, uh, yeah, happy days. Um, and there's also a hub world, Waddle D Town, which you get to go and. Set, upgrade set abilities and um, check out Kirby's house, which has also been transported to the Forgotten Lands. Um, now let's talk about the worlds. There's many worlds to explore, including the grasslands, the desert, the a carnival area, which is a little too ambitious for my taste, but okay. There's also um, the snow world and uh, another desert world, I think. Um, you also get to explore a lava land as well. And at one point you'll also go to a mall. Hell yes, teenagers. No, hell no, teenagers, stop. Okay, 
What do you say we uh, skip all the unimportant stuff and get to the final battle? Of course, with um, my average style of reviewing video games, I of course have to take a look at the boss in at like the ten minute at the ten minute mark, I believe. Um, so let's do this. Spoilers: three, two, one. DDD is in a factory, um, and he is tribal, and apparently. He, again, they changed his design because I don't think they could find a design for this feller. Um, so you would, so you beat him up and you go up an elevator as someone says, Welcome to the future. Like, um, and, and on the speakers, it's like, Welcome to the future of robotic technology. You're about to enter a brand new world. As you, and then you get to the top of the um, building and you see a lion creature of some sorts in a business suit, I think. I mean, again, you forget things. It's been a while since I've played through the game. Believe me. Um, and so you battle him. He's very hard, of course. But then a gelatinous cyan glob, I believe, swallows the lion creature. And I also, and I think also eats up Elphalin? Yeah. Um, and you gotta run away from it. And you could also attack it as well at a, at a, at a few points. Um, but once you escape, you enter a... Uh, you climb the, to the very top of the building um, where everything is falling apart and you have to battle this monstrosity that I forget the name. The name escapes me. I don't care. It's the worst boss in the game. Hands down. If, if you don't know what you're doing, it is single-handedly the worst boss you'll ever face in a uh, first-party video game other, or otherwise. I mean, by God, like there, there's, there was, I, 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 I beat it obviously, but it's, if you intend to play it on the hard difficulty, brace yourself, please, for, for the love of God, do just, just brace yourself. It's going to be a crap battle, of, um, in any way, sense of the, in any sense of the word. But once you do beat it, the world goes back to normal, and Kirby gets to finally sleep, in his house. Thus ending Kirby in the Forgotten Land. However, that's not the end. Uh, the cat lady, I believe, tells you about this other dimension where you get to face all of the bosses again and go through fucked up worlds of all those other lands that you explored already. Long story short, I did not bother with that. There's also the option to do an arena thing, like a boss rush, of course. There's also always a boss rush in a Kirby game. But this time it's a little different. You get to... um. It's like an actual arena, and I think you face off Meta Knight at one point, I'm not sure. I, again, I never bothered with that. So, long story short, what can I say about Kirby and the Forgotten Land? If you want to play this game, please, for the love of God, buy it. If you, if you, it, it, maybe ask for it for the holidays. That always works. It worked with me for Sonic Superstars. Uh, thank you so much, some call me Johnny. Um, as a, and, and yeah, and as a normal, average, everyday gamer, you could enjoy it. Absolutely so. But... If I'm being honest, I'm sorry. I just, I just don't like it. It's, it's, it's too ambitious for its own good. The bosses are too hard. There's not enough collectibles, um, uh, and of course, you also get to transform into things. That's cool. Very cool. You get like Kirby, a uh, car Kirby, cone Kirby, and uh, stairs Kirby. But yeah, aside from that, uh, like that cool idea, it's not really uh, that fleshed out. It's it's not it's not a great game. I'm sorry. It's not worth the many scores that it's been getting. And believe me, when the scores came in for this game, I was furious. I was like, dang it, I don't want to be the asshole here. I don't. I just don't. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this a 5 out of 10 for many, many reasons. Of course, there's plenty of good things, like the controls, the abilities, the forms that you get to take, it's cool. The way that you solve puzzles in the game and collect different Waddle Dees, it's, it's, it's nice. Um, and all the, and the, um, uh, currency that you earn can be used to get you to, 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 um, buy figures of, out of a pachinko machine, but yeah, five out of ten for it just being not as fleshed out, not as ambitious, and the bosses being way too difficult. It's just not fun for me, I'm sorry. And believe me, that was my first playthrough, and I have no intention of ever playing this game again. I, I, I really, I'm very sorry for those of you who are actually interested, but buy the game, play it, you can love it too. I'm not gonna 
don't don't change your opinion to match mine. It's subjective. You can think it's good. You can think it's amazing. You can think it's your favorite Kirby game of all time. That's perfectly fine. But for me, I'd rather just put it back on the shelf. All right. Well, um, that was a very quick review for some odd reason. One take, thankfully. Um, what should I review next? Should I review a game I've already reviewed? Should I review an RPG? Who knows? Ooh, ooh, happy days. So, <clears throat> um, well, this is awkward. Uh, give him a high five, Kirby. Uh, pretend that Kirby gave you a high five, please. Just, just pretend he's he's looking at you. All right. Well, I'm seeing you guys presumably in the next episode. Who knows what's gonna come? A Brady of the bunch movie review? I don't know. A Brady Stalks rebooted episode? I don't know. Aside from that, sayonara, peeps. Take care.